Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the White Pube Podcast. My name is Gabrielle Della Puente. My name is Rona Mohammed. And we are here to do a quick ins and outs. I mean, it's not quick. An <laughs> podcast about our ins and outs for 2024 and 2023. If you're not familiar, there's been a bit of a trend of people like rather than just saying like some perfectly succinct New Year's resolution, they're just saying like some things that they want to do more of this year and some things that they want to like leave in 2023. And hmm. that's what we're going to do because... Uh, we haven't written a new text this week um, because we've got to do our taxes. <laughs> so <laughs> we're doing this quickly instead. And then we'll be back next week with our first review of the year. So on that note, what are you um, What are you in and, and out in? What's your, what, where are you starting with this? My list is unwieldy and comprehensive. I have <laughs> gone... For, uh, some of them are really serious. Some of them are just arbitrary. So I'm going to start with one I'm actually really proud of that I've already kicked out. I've quit. Oh, no more elf bars. Elf bars are out. We're done. They're disposable. Imagine how many elf bars are going to be sitting in landfill. They also make my mouth taste weird. I don't know if anyone <laughs> else also <laughs> vapes, but like, That's I'm so <laughs> grim. <laughs> like they're just <laughs> they're not selling me like the the fun fruity flirty marketing vision. Like I, I don't know if if any of our listeners or viewers or readers also. Isn't it? Like, if you're also an elf bar person, please write in and tell me: Do they make your mouth taste weird, or is it just me? Am I just doing it wrong? Because I found that like my mouth just used to taste like mad blue. Is like, this like when you tried to do natural deodorant and it just didn't work? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we had to like, have well, a serious conversation. Like three years of my life, but I was like in natural <laughs> into natural deodorant. And thank God we pulled you out of it. Like, no offence to people who it works for, <laughs> but it didn't work for Serena. <laughs> <laughs> and it, like, I feel like it made me smell. It made me smell. <laughs> it did. Because I can, like, I can go a day for getting to put on deodorant, but, like, natural deodorant so what, can make me smell. What are you doing instead of elf bars? Snooze. Snooze. Snooze? I will tell you what snooze is because you've not asked, but um, just because I'm now in the pocket of big snooze. Um, <laughs> it's, new, it's it's a Scandinavian thing. I think Swedish or Scandinavian thing. It's like a little pocket, a little pouch, and you put it in between your gum and your lip, and it just sits there. And you can do it indoors. You, you can do it wherever you like. You can do it on a toilet. You can do it on a plane. That's enough for me. <laughs> but, and I'm saying this like kind of off list i don't want to add this to the in and out list because this is two new year's resolution we're going to be 30 this year we are going to be 30 this year apparently your lungs stop having the ability to regenerate themselves past 30 stop. i don't know if this is like urban legend but like smokers <laughs> who quit before 30 their lungs can like grow back oh my god <laughs> after 30 it's downhill are you going to quit smoking this year? I think halfway through this year, I have to quit smoking. Oh my God. On a technicality. <laughs> On a te <laughs> oh shit. That's the most New Year's resolution. -y. New Year's resolution-y these actually get. I quite like taking things out. Like my out list is really extensive. I like taking things out of my life. For example, buying new clothes. No more new clothes. This is big. Don't you just feel like buying new clothes is cringe? <laughs> cringe. Cringe is the word for it. But like also demoralising when you get the little parcel in the post and it's all wrapped in plastic and you're excited to try on your new clothes. I just hate the way that makes me feel Ugh, vulnerable. Why? I just feel why? vulnerable in that moment Tell of like why, excitement. For like, it's just like, oh, like I just, I just feel like I'm, I feel like I'm being patronised. <laughs> By myself and also by like big <laughs> ASOS, you know? Yeah, no, I, I get that. I get that feeling. The warehouse overlords have sent me a parcel and it's plastic wrapped. And I'm so excited, even though I've given them my little tokens, my little money tokens. You know, it just like, it's, too, it's, it's, it's too much. Like it's a bit pass, it's like pacifying or something. Like, yeah, that makes sense. I just, I, for me, the cringe is like how much cooler it is to be able to make your own stuff. Like, I watch all these YouTubers, I watch with Wendy, I watch Jenna Phipps, like, mm. 
all the all these cool people who can like mock something up on a dress form which is like you know those mannequin things and like they just drape things around it and then they pin it and then they put it through a sewing machine and then they wear it and I'm like oh my god I want to be you I actually got a dress form for Christmas that was like the only present I got (laughs) I'm so committed to this to this also and like not even necessarily having to go out and like had to do some sewing course like I just want to do the school of YouTube I want to pull shit from my wardrobe lay it out draw around it so that I can repeat the pattern and like find what fits and what feels comfortable and like yeah this makes complete sense with who you are as a person because you are a survivalist exactly I'm like like it's like the teach the person to fish thing just teach me how to fish just teach me how to fish. But like, I'm never stepping foot in a H&M again. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck all those places. I don't remember the last time I was in a clothes shop. And like, mm. the thought of it is something I don't miss. I watched an episode of Big Mouth. Whatever the last season of Big Mouth, um, there was an episode where it kind of focused on the character who's got who's autism coded. And there's a moment when he's walking into a shopping mall and he says, like, oh, the shopping mall is where everyone goes to to dress like each other. Or, like, this idea that that's where you go to buy your costume so that you fit in with the rest of society. And, like, that's how he understands it f- from his pers- very specific perspective. But I was watching that and I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be replicable. And I don't want to replicate other people. And I don't know necessarily what my, you know, the niche is, but it's not going to be found in the shops. Yeah, you're more likely to figure it out by making clothes yourself, aren't you? Yeah. I think it's it's worth us using the space on the podcast to say that fashion is one of the most polluting industries in the entire world. Can you imagine that? Like, fashion is, like, up there with oil and gas. Like, that's fucking crazy, but, like, it takes so much water and like so much available land space that could be used for better things than like making a pair of shit jeans that you're going to throw away after a season if you're if you're lucky and you're really looking to get some wear out of them like we could literally feed the world with all the space that is used to grow terrible slogan t-shirts i think it's it's like it's there's something about the industrial scale of fashion and like fast fashion like brand new fashion that just like the scale of that makes me feel woozy and ill and okay it's also uncool i've got follow-ups to this my other in is like 100 percenting my wardrobe <laughs> i want to make sure i wear everything in it so for the next however long it's going to take I'm going to wear a different combination of items every day. Even if I don't leave the house. Just to, like, feel it on my body. And, like, to see whether it's something that I want to continue to own or whether I want to donate it. And also just to, like, have a sense of variety and have fun trying to, like, style pieces. It's like, you know, I remember a few years ago there being this really big push when beauty YouTube was massive to, like, want to buy all these different palettes and like lipsticks and blushes and like this feeling that you needed to own all of the things rather than have one eyeshadow palette and make sure you use every single color on it and hit pan on all of them I want to like hit pan on my life (laughs) I don't want to be someone who has things and doesn't use them and like I've actually found (laughs) this like real danger with getting into knitting where like I keep getting recommended all these YouTube videos by people who are like yarn stash tour like they want to just take Mm. you through their shelves and shelves and shelves and how like here's how I organized my DK yarns and my merino and my blah 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 and I'm like good for you that you look like you have a fucking shop in your house but like wouldn't it be better to use it and like make stuff with it and like get to a point where you have 100% used it all Mm. rather than like just accumulating stuff 
yeah I don't know every time I hear someone else say this I'm like wow 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 um because it's so easy to say when you're like a person that's got the stuff and then like moralizing about all the stuff that you don't want to have but you have anyway but like so much of that is hot like that's like the industrial process like how do you get away from that without making your own clothes like how do you make well-made clothes when they just come from factories now um it just it, it's i hate it i hate i hate the moralizing about that when it's like you know the alternative is deeply inconvenient but <laughs> having said that there is there is kind of like a, a i don't know if it's learned it must be unlearnable like in, in yeah. collecting yarns collecting eyeshadow palettes collecting clothes and like bits and bobs and you know like just i think it's fine to moralize on that part of it like mm. I, I i think it is absolutely fine to judge someone on <laughs> they accumulate just to be like i'm the king sat on all of my treasure <laughs> i just don't want to have a house full of shit i want to like um for example I'm, I'm halfway through making the jasper jumper which is like a scrap yarn jumper so it's like a case of just tying together all of your different sh bits and bobs that you've got lying around that felt like you know pieces of yarn that felt maybe too long to throw out but not long enough to use um mm. i just feel like whew, like a, re a sense of relief mm. that that i'm i'm um i'm not letting things go to waste yeah brielle you're literally tying up loose ends literally i am tight oh my god that's so true <laughs> i love that another in is like i want to learn spanish again properly. <gasps> you you tell me about this because i've got one that corresponds because I just really miss it, like deeply miss it. And there's enough in my brain to understand quite a lot already. Mm. But like, I've always lacked the confidence to speak. Like if I could sit down and try and read a book and I'll be like, okay, mm -hmm. that is impaired quite a lot by chronic fatigue. I feel like I have an actual timer in my brain when I start trying to read Spanish now. Like there's like 30 minutes in me and then I'm dead. So it's just that's kind of too much brain juice it's crazy it's crazy how palpable it is oh. um but i want to try and find a way to learn spanish accessibly mm -hmm. and i was trying to think like you know maybe if there was a few languages that i would want to learn it would be like spanish japanese which i did a gcse in and then maybe something like arabic like it'd be so cool to learn arabic in <laughs> serena's face it's like it sounds so nice um mm. But if I had to pick one of them, I think, like, ultimately, I would like to try and get to Chile one day if my mm. health ever improves and then try and find my people. Like, my dad is Chilean, but I don't have a relationship with him. And, like, mm. when I've done 23 and Me, my, you know, percentage of Chilean is obviously really big and it, like, pinpoints exactly where... Um, oh, really? my family's from yeah it, it in Santiago like it, it has enough data to be able to tell you the city which is the capital to be fair but I just want to go and see if there's anyone I know <laughs> and make um, friends if you don't like and make friends find out about the art scene like it was I've met a few Chilean painters last year and it was like mm. I don't know it's that <laughs> part of diaspora discourse that like I never really think about because I just don't necessarily think of myself in that way mm. because like I don't have a relationship with the Chilean side of me um but it would be nice to to suss it out a bit more um yeah and, and I was speaking to a friend about it who's also got long covid and I was talking to her about like how like I want to do it but I just feel like physically I can't and she she was so encouraging and she was kind of talking about like well think about how it's gonna I don't know like make new connections in your brain just like learning a new thing like picking up new vocab yeah. and like that visual of like making all these little new connections in your brain felt so mm. exciting to me in the same way that it does when I think oh, I'm gonna learn how to sew and I'm gonna learn how to do like bias tape and <laughs> I don't know yeah all, all the all gaining those words. skills like gaining skills, thinking like, about it as feels... skilling up and xp yeah. adding it to you xp feel, if yeah. i think about life as a game 
all of it seems like way more fun and way more manageable <laughs> and like less about I don't know I don't I don't feel joy in trying to climb the career ladder and making more money and hmm. blah 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 like I find joy in adding new skills and like that was one of the greatest things about learning to knit last year is like yeah. I can I I know enough about knitting now to be able to riff on patterns when I'm making them mm. and and last that's night get competency. this like that's competency last last night I was watching a film um I was watching Ennis Man which mm. like I didn't really enjoy but mm. visually I enjoyed it I didn't enjoy the story visually it's shot on film so if the colors Gorgeous. are kind yeah. of incredible and like I, I thought I want to see this film more than I want to listen to it and I was knitting as I was I was watching so I ended up I, I was like okay I'm gonna figure out right now here on the spot how to knit without looking and I did it and I, I was just it was just a case of like moving where my thumb was but like I'm feeling it like skill and feeling it with my yeah. thumb oh my god I like was ecstatic <laughs> did you just feel really cool like did it just feel sick <laughs> so cool <laughs> I was like I felt like yeah like I'd leveled up in that moment and I'd chosen to level up it was like in a game when you realize mm. like oh I've got enough points to cash in like I can level up if I want you did the little you press the button and it it, it, and it went, yeah yeah and I did it <laughs> that's an amazing moment skills the leveling skills. up yeah are you gonna learn These Arabic are... why did you make a face yeah because that's on my list to well we can, I think I spend a lot of time smoking and scrolling Twitter on my phone, and I just want to. I feel like I'm wasting my own time. Okay. Like, yeah. I'm not getting anything out of that. So rather than scrolling mindlessly on my phone, I'm gonna use the time to Duolingo Arabic myself. And I say this, knowing full well that I haven't soft launched my boyfriend yet. Whatever, fine. But um, <laughs> just, who cares? Like, it's just like, Can you it's, speak Arabic? No. Oh, I, <laughs> I want to I want to convince him uh, that there's very little convincing that needs to be done I'm gonna we're gonna learn Arabic together and then we will have a language to speak in together that's not commonly spoken among like the great British public in like East London the parts of East London that we frequent because I can't like I can't we can't, we can't choose like French Spanish Italian because the hips to speak those you know Arabic they don't speak Arabic we can learn Arabic and talk about them I don't want to do the Duolingo thing. I want to find like a physical group because like, I mean, we've written about this on the website a bit, but in case people haven't been reading, um, my brain has kind of been transformed by <laughs> learning about third places. So this idea that like your home is your first place, your workplace is your second place. And for older generations, there was a, there was in existence a third place where they would like socialize and find like nourishment in things that didn't involve being in the home or, or the workplace um and part of that meant coming into contact with people that they might not necessarily be friends with but like they're in community with and how mm. like being in um being exposed to those people who you, yeah you might not necessarily like be best mates with but their ideas and their conversations and their like way of living um like gives you a newness and a variety and like a greater understanding of like how people live and how people approach things and politics and all yeah. the rest of it um you know it kind of breaks outside of confirmation bias and all the rest of it like that learning about that has like so deeply deeply bummed me out <laughs> because I hmm. want it and I miss like I think I used to get that from traveling especially with you to like hmm. all these different galleries and like we would just like put ourselves in lots of situations with people who yeah. yeah we might not necessarily be mates with but we were learning a lot by um moving outside of like our own routines hmm. and like post 2020 my and post getting sick my workplace and my home as they did for many people became one overlapping place hmm. and then that's just continued for me because yeah. of long covid and like 
when I've got energy, I want to just use it on getting to the third place. But I think like, what if that third place was also a Spanish group <laughs> full of well, like, random people in Liverpool? <laughs> but that's like, that's kind of how it's really easy to pick up a language when you're speaking it aloud to a person another person that speaks the same language like it's really hard to learn language in isolation like with just like you know like the written thing you can have friends that you only speak to in spanish spanish only friends and then i can read spanish art reviews and i can get in on what's going on in the spanish speaking art world you can oh write God. spanish art reviews for our i can write spanish art reviews Oh the white people's going to be bilingual, trilingual, oh when my we God. collectively learn Arabic. <laughs> um, can I also just pick up on one thing that you said? So, oh, yeah. when you said like you just feel like you're wasting your life going on Twitter, Twitter yeah. is my first out. I have deleted my personal Twitter account. Oh my um, God, you deleted? Which was like very quickly. Um. I don't even know if I don't I don't want to use the word influenced. I was just convinced when I heard <laughs> this one sentence said to me. Um Oh god, you're gonna say it to me and convince me. Yeah, Let's I'm gonna convince you and I'm gonna convince everyone who's listening. So I listened to Search Engine, which is a podcast, um, and they did an episode where the guy who runs that podcast was interviewing Ezra Klein. And Ezra Klein, who's got a lot of history in tech, basically said your life is the sum total of what you pay attention to. That made me feel ill. And then he said, mm. like, he he described how he, he wants to pay more attention to how he pays attention and, like, mm. where that attention is best spent. And basically, it made me realise that, like, when I go on Twitter and when I watch short form video content, it goes in one ear and out the other. I literally don't remember any of it. I have watched mm. hours of YouTube shorts. I've n- I don't have TikTok, but I've watched enough YouTube and enough Instagram it's reels thing, yeah. to know that I don't remember a fucking single one of them. And like the fact that I am spending my life watching mm. things that like don't make any impression on me, like, I don't like that at all. And it's the same I'm feeling. Done. It's like like the baby being pacified by the warehouse overlords. It's like the same yeah. pacifying effect. Mm. I don't want that. Done with that. That's out. That feeling, warehouse overlord pacifying you, infant tyrant, gone. Out. It's gone. Yeah. I don't want it. Gone. I don't want to like <clears throat> fill my life with these really empty bullshit moments. Like, even if sometimes I think it's gonna feel like a relief. I actually think it might be more of a relief to stare into space. Like, I don't trust Twitter to to add anything to my life. I think it would be better and, in a sense, more mindful to mm. fucking stare into space. Do you know what? I You're just actually too persuasive. Like, you... It, <laughs> world to the wise. Like, never go shopping with Gabrielle because, like, it's it's just... Like, you convince me all the time of things that I'm I, I have no opinion on like I, and I, I had, a, had a, a kind of complicit opinion to begin with but now I really do believe that tomorrow morning when I have my first cigarette of the day in the dark you're gonna stare into space I'm gonna stare into space because I mean, that, also I should, it's his his the his the, this was the other part of his like thesis hmm. it was that we we become more like the platforms we use so mm-hmm. Essentially, if we're going on, say, say you're like a Twitter person, and you are like fucking into it. He he was basically saying that like you end up becoming someone who goes around life like looking for an argument, or someone Ooh. who goes around life trying to say really snappy like bumper sticker yeah. type things yeah. because like you're trying to reduce complex thoughts into like quick little snappy things that you would get likes on, yeah. and. If you're an Instagram person, you go around life in a visual sense because you're like, what would be a good place to take a photo? Or yeah. where could I look best? 
You're looking and for like, like a handsome image and everything you see. Yeah. Everything. You want to be in handsome places. Mm. You want to be like, you want to travel mm. to like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, it just gets absorbed and, and into that, your value system, right? Because that's what you're looking yeah, 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 yeah. at. Yeah. Your, be- your behavior patterns, like mm. all of it. And it, it, it that doesn't even sound like a stretch to me. That mm. sounds completely realistic to, yeah. if you're using this like certain system every day, of course you're going to like, start to adapt to that system yeah i don't want that and in the podcast he was ezra klein was like prompting the listener like if you're if that's true what platforms do you even want to be like like which ones do you want to use i don't want to be like twitter i don't Mm. mind being on the more visual side of things even though i've got so many problems with instagram because like ultimately i think i do care more about art <laughs> yeah. i do about arguments <laughs> so fuck twitter i'm done I think, i'm so done with it i think we've we've said this year on year that like that way of reasoning and interacting with the world i think we've known between us as people that like twitter mm. is a busted place to exist like even professionally we've not yeah. got much actual value from should we delete the white pube twitter well, this is what this... I've been meaning to have this conversation with you, but, like, it's because so I don't difficult. Go on it. You don't go on it. I go on it occasionally. I feel like it's an obligation because, mm. because we have a book deal and, like, how mad would our publisher be if we were like, oh, by the way, we don't have Twitter anymore. Uh, yeah. But oh. how, worth is, how worth it is it to have that app all year and then to tell people in October, oh, by the way, we've got a book and get like 30 likes. Like, actually, who gives a shit? Like, I don't. <laughs> Twitter is a place where like authors go to hustle as well. Like, it's it not... Is. Like, people are not... I mean, people are selling books on Instagram, but like... I know. You know, there's there is a book presence on Twitter, and at it, the same time, I'm like, I hope it doesn't even exist. Come autumn, I hope the app is gone. I will say though, do you know? Do you remember? The white pube Twitter is archived on the British Library, in the British Library. Yeah, that's terrible, online. Isn't it? Like it's that's like, like actually terrible. The white pube website and the white pube Twitter, not Instagram. Isn't that interesting? is interesting but yeah that is my like horrible feeling i'm done with it so i agree and i'm I'm getting i've made peace with it so like (laughs) collectively out twitter twitter and short form content i'm not allowed to watch any anymore i've banned myself i'm not gonna put tiktok in out this year i'm saying this knowing full well that i might call it out next year or the year after that but i just think there's only so much you can well out of your life but yeah. if you take those Some things joy. out this is what i've put back in okay audiobooks <gasps> oh i love oh. an audiobook yeah books are great but like yeah. to have audiobooks specifically coming from my phone so that mm. like i've diverted that feeling of like i want to i want entertainment from this device <laughs> i have yeah I'm, I'm listening to tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow at the moment by mm. gabrielle seven and like it just feels right even if it's like five minutes while i'm making my breakfast in the morning and it's just a quick five minutes yeah oh perfect this makes sense as well with like what you've said before because i often find i'm like i like this i like listening to podcasts and i like listening to podcasts while i'm doing other things okay. that haven't doing the house clean or like um i don't know washing my face in the morning um but i often find myself scrolling twitter when i need something to look at exactly you don't need, you don't need to look at things because you, you don't can look, need at to look at your things yeah perfect well oh, you don't need to look space. at anything you can do your eyes closed but you can just close your eyes or listen <laughs> and then feel with your hands Plus. yeah so i just i'm I got, I've just got this feeling that, like, in 30 years, we're going to look back at this time and be like, what the fuck were we doing? Like, trying oh, to yeah. fill every moment with screens. Yeah. And I'm, like, 
the most guilty of doing that as I look in front of my dual screen setup and I've got my phone and me like you know what I mean yeah. a million yeah. windows and I'm mm. I, I I love it but what I'm realizing <laughs> is like I had a love for the internet when I was 12 where I was like giddy with excitement to go on the internet and like I don't feel That's that giddiness special. anymore yeah you want to Pair back your use so it feels special again. I understand that. Exactly. And I, yeah. I and also find what else makes me feel that specialness. Mm. Like if it's a okay, look at this cardigan I've knitted from beginning to end and do you like the buttons I've chosen? Like that has been a real giddiness. Mm. Um and just also spending time in haberdasheries. <laughs> like yeah. the fucking best place in the world. And like starting like I, I, when i was thinking about learning spanish again like reading you know like the labels on things and there's always like in in this country oh, yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. the english version there's the spanish the french the italian like starting to read the spanish bits out loud just to myself and like enjoying the way spanish sounds coming out of my mouth these are all interconnected so nice. these ins and outs like we've they do yeah they feel like this is connected. great we're really telling a complete narrative with this like i'm <laughs> a big fan I yeah, I'm very here for this version of Gabrielle that's like screenless, but also joyful because that giddiness is so. Yeah. I don't know. That's something that does feel like it's missing a lot in life, like leisure time and like excitement, the the, the excitement that comes with like not being at work, like being fully in something that you're like fully enjoying. That like mm. that's a kind of passion that I don't know. It's very missing under like capitalism. Yeah. Go on, give me a um, quick fire run through the rest of your ins and outs. Okay. Okay. Getting earwax scooped out of my ears. Checking the weather forecast. This is all in, by the way. Roast dinners. Weird key rings. Jam. Caesar salad. Lime bikes. Ice coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, vinted. Like finding a bargain on vinted. I think I'm not Perfect. quite done with the novelty of that, of being like, yeah, I, I'm really lucky. I've got an eye. Mm -hmm. I think. I keep finding bargains. I love Good. it. The thrill. It is, a, it is a rush, but like it's a rush I don't get from shopping. Like, Can I tell you my, my one find on Vinted that like I actually can't get over? Yeah. Um, so do you know Larika Matoshi? <laughs> Have I showed you this? Are you messing? So, no, go on. So I typed her name in just for a laugh. Just for a laugh. Because I was like, there's no way. She's oh like God. a fucking cool designer. Like, yeah. And also like, I'm like, my body is, I just never thought that she would even make things in my size because of, you know, fashion. Mm. <laughs> Let alone, was it beyond vintage? And then I typed in her name into vintage. And there was like two items. There was a dress and it was like one of the big kind of puffy dresses that she's known for. Hmm. And then there was one knitted jumper in a size 18. And I was like, what the fuck? And it was, I think it was like 75 pound, but I, I offered 40 and the guy counted 50 and I said, yeah. yeah. And it is so good. Right, I'm going to show it. it out? If you're watching the video version, then I'm so happy for you. Um, if you're listening to the audio, shall I do an audio you're... description of the jumper? You can do an audio description. And it's okay. got a t-shirt underneath, but that's part of the effect. Gabrielle is holding up, uh, like, um, not navy blue. This is like a blue blue, like a it cyan is... blue on it screen. Is... No, it's not cyan. It's like... Um... <laughs> hyperlink local. blue it's like ultra hyperlink blue that's the color hmm. hyperlink blue jumper it's knitted and it like pinches in to like a weird knit vortex cut out shape of a crescent moon and, and the there's... moon is like a hole there's a yeah. there's a hole what the fuck and it's got um the sleeves are so long it's got thumb holes in the sleeves and it's mar it's got like a merino fluffiness to it. That's gorgeous. I was too busy describing it to appreciate it. That's beautiful. It's so good. That's a beautiful oh jumper. Go on, quick fire out. Um, 
if you've got quick fire out yes i have snoozing my alarm claw clips bun headaches period poos tote bags adidas sambas and salamons claw clips is such a good one i'm so sick of them i hate claw clipping it's become like my go-to lazy hairstyle and i'm yeah. fucking done with it plats two plats i'm gonna become a two plat girl you're gonna see me looking like pippy long stockings 2024 i'm becoming a two bun girl because yeah. like as soon as i do it it makes me feel good so my issue is like i get because bun headaches as you will note mm. is on my outlet my outlet <laughs> i get really bad bun headaches from like I one do, bun but i just put up with them <laughs> <laughs> They're on my out list. I'm not. I'm not dealing with it. And like, it's it's just the minor the minor bodily inconvenience of like getting a headache because your hair like the minor bodily inconvenience is like the big overriding thing. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the majority of this quick fire out list. Period poos. Hate them. Hate them because I feel like I'm shitting against my will. No more. Yeah, but how are you gonna stop that? I'm just over it. I'm just over it. <laughs> I'm just going to declare myself over it. And then it's done. And then um, hope it doesn't happen again. <laughs> yeah. Tote bags. The minor bodily inconvenience of like a little strap. A little strap mm. sliding down my shoulder. Fuck off. Done. Fuck that. Get in the yeah. bin. We're gone. Um, and then also, I forgot to mention this one. Eczema. Out. I love Ex- this like will. This like body will to change how you work <laughs> physiologically. <laughs> I'm going to manifest it. I'm, I'm, I'm simply choosing to transcend. I declare it out, therefore, eczema generally, but specifically my neck eczema, nexema, mm, done, nexema, nexema out, really I'm over funny. it, I declare That's myself so healed. Speaking of sickness, very quickly, I, one of my outs, um, which is a bit more abstract, is like losing track of time, <laughs> because I spend so much time inside and a lot of time in bed. I am very familiar with crip time, um, just like the surrealism of like not the fuck, like never knowing what happened when, and like I am yeah. sick to death of people saying to me, "Oh, Gab, that only happened two weeks ago," but for me it feels like three months ago or wh- whatever the yeah. case is. I don't want that to happen anymore. So like, what I'm trying to do to come to it is on Notion. I found a template for a habit tracker. So I'm just keeping track of, like, not necessarily because I want to try and create good habits or lose bad habits. I just want to know what my habits are (laughs) so I can see what I did when. Less, like, I don't want a detailed diary. I just want some data. And, like, I think that will help me ground in time. (laughs) I, do you know what? I fucking love that. Because unlike my Nexima out where I'm just declaring we're done. It culturally mm-hmm. done. You're actually you've broken this down into like a tangible step you can take. Exactly. Data. Data. And and one thing I'm really happy with about 2023 is I downloaded the one second every day app and like just took one second of video every day. And I it meant it that come you know 31st of december i could export a six minute long video and see my entire year and even if a lot of it was just me in bed there were some Mm. really good bits and it meant that i could like have a general sense of when things happened which like i'm sure other people are very Mm. good at i've lost the skill (laughs) are you gonna do um a second a day again for 2024 or was that just the one year already i've started (gasps) it's happening it's just like ingrained into me now i have like Mm. an alarm set for like 3 p.m ish and i just have it going i should take is... today's second live on the video actually shall i flash that? you should no, no don't flash <laughs> <laughs> you just have to... <laughs> okay perfect thank you i really recommend other people download it the ads are a bit annoying and they've gotten more annoying as i got close to the end of the year um mm. which i am really resentful of because you have to I've watch the ad to take the ads. clip no 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 but then you can add that to the out list ads ads are out ads have been out for maybe a while i i actually don't have the stomach for them anymore <laughs> like growing up on the internet and like living through put locker and mm. all of the other bullshit yeah. like we, we had to get used to having our time taken away from us 
with adverts no more just before then just before like we broke for christmas i was speaking to a friend of mine in the office about we were, t- we were talking about like screen time like the screen mm. time breakdown on like our phones and um the second week of december i spent 13 hours a week on twitter that's actually like that's actually too much time that's an entire day a waking day that's a waking day on and twitter. like since it's do you remember like, anything from that week no that was me you consciously to crying twitter. i need to delete it but like i'm ju- i'm judging you <laughs> i you i was judging me this was like the beginning of that was, <laughs> that was the beginning i said I, I mentioned this to be like to make the point about ads because imagine mm. if screen time tracked the amount of time you had spent looking at an ad not just on your phone <sighs> but like on your laptop yeah. on telly i think we would feel disgusted because it's, you know it's not consensual she was in pirating <laughs> what's out pirating has never been out quite frankly subscriptions <laughs> all subscriptions out in pirating and I would like to watch more films. Film clubs are in. Oh my god, this is what I've been waiting to talk about. Okay, films are in this year for me as well. I've just decided to lean in. I've got movie better than Netflix, I think. I think I'm. I yeah. don't pay for Netflix anymore. No more yeah. Netflix. Yeah. This Fuck is my only all. streaming service. Movie. We're going higher, bro. I want to watch good things. I am, I'm going higher brow than that. This is, this is my announcement. Is Love it. I yeah. have gotten into musicals, not post millennium musicals. I'm talking 1950s. I'm in love with Gene Kelly. Have you seen <laughs> anything he's been in before? <laughs> so me and me and my boyfriend, I was talking to him about In and Out and this like trend everyone's doing and he was saying his out is menu screens and like having Mm. to decide what to pick he was like i don't want to waste my time going through all of these menu screens on all these different apps because like it's just infuriating and i agree i never ever ever feel like browsing netflix because like the mechanism as you go through and the way it flashes up and it starts playing like the trailer and it flashes and it flashes like irritates me so much so we were like do you know what let's just watch classics like let's own we didn't even use the classics we said let's only watch masterpieces let's Mm. only watch the films that like everyone thinks is a masterpiece fucking yes fuck the rest of it so i the wording of that we chose to only watch masterpieces yeah iconic singing in the rain 1952 yeah i've watched it an american in paris made Mm. the year before we've watched it like films where people tap dance (laughs) i will watch i when you said that you're in love with gene kelly i was i went to google him i thought you meant the guy that played willy wonka in the original oh fuck off that's gene wilder no gene oh, kelly God. i actually don't even love him to look at it's only when he's moving i think okay. i just fancy people who tap dance mm. i think it's like and dress well the the clothes the colors the the His fact that so much of the film the films are like really well painted sets like it's uh. obviously it's before cgi it's like the same way it would look on stage yeah it's so romantic um mm. and, and i've only seen two of them so far but in both Mad american and paris and singing in the rain it's like here's a story we're gonna give you the first act we're gonna give you the second act and then we're not gonna give you a third act we're just gonna give you like a kind of dream sequence dance number and then at the very end everything's fine and there isn't really a third act because it's don't trust trust us everything's worked itself out it is so surreal as a structure for a film (laughs) um we went to see the boy and the heron yesterday in the cinema oh yeah and like the fact that the boy and the heron um which is a ghibli film it sort of followed the same here's the first act here's the second act now it's fantasia (laughs) it was like (laughs) this is all i want to see now Mm. (laughs) masterpieces i don't know i I was thinking about this 
going into like the new year and thinking about what I wanted to write about, like what I what I wanted to try and reverse engineer in terms of my reviews. Like I wanted to write something about, I wanted to write a review about how I was so blown away by like the sheer scale and spectacle of something like mind blowing, mind boggling. I'm going to sound like like Henry VIII, like some impetuous Renaissance king, because I think I just I just want to experience that fantasia. Act Act Three Fantasia, unhinged from any sense of reality and plot. I just want to only masterpieces. You're gonna get into music musicals as well. It's gonna it's, be so good. I there's there's something <laughs> psychologically holding me back from like being all the way in that, and I think it's it's just the it's just the sentence I've got into musicals recently. Like I, <laughs> yeah, but it's not no judgments. No, it's not no like shaming. theater kid musicals. It's like like your nan musicals. Oh my god, it's so much. It's so much better. Mm. We're going. I really feel like we've regressed um, generationally in this podcast. <laughs> we do. It. Do we sound seventy years old because we've said I like, kind of do. yeah, clothes are not as well made as they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> All these kids and their apps and they're scrolling. And I'm in love with Gene. You're Kelly. in love with Gene Kelly. <laughs> 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 and. <laughs> I think there's nothing wrong with that. Like, we really are. We're going to be, I, I will say this again, we're going to be 30 this year. We've got no brain plasticity left. It's gone. And your, your lungs are fully developed. And Exactly. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week with our first text of the year. And uh, that's it. That's, that's it. it. Watch You've out. have got for... an obligation to do absolutely fucking anything after the end of this podcast no no I, I i would like i actually would like to hear other people's ins and outs because fair enough yeah. i'm just nosy I, I would like to hear yours dear listener watcher viewer reader please let me know yours but address it only to me not to gabrielle <laughs> okay thank you for listening and we'll see you next week Bye. Bye.